All right, our next presenter, all right, are we on number five? Wesley Uthus. She's owner and co-founder of Primp Cheap Chic Boutique, and she has an inspiring story of two girls with a dream. Wesley graduated in 2008 with a degree in apparel design from the University of Minnesota, and two years out of college, she opened her own clothing store, which is amazing, two years out of college, because I'm trying to think what I was doing two years out of college. Right? Like, I think I applied for a credit card and was denied. <laughs> <laughs> because I had never had a credit card before, is what they told me. Uh, you know, I got one now. I can spend $250 wherever I want, <laughs> as long as it's Macy's. Okay, so let's please welcome our next presenter. This is an amazing story. Um, her name is Wesley Uthus. Great. So tonight I'd like to talk about learning, um, specifically a passion for learning, adapting, learning agility. Um, I am the co-founder of Primp, Cheap Chic Boutique. Um, we started uh, five years ago and now have seven stores throughout the Twin Cities and in Rochester. Um, we have 50 employees. And eight years ago, I was graduating from the University of Minnesota um, with a degree in fashion design. Um, I had absolutely no business experience. I had never managed inventory or managed people. <laughs> um, I had never put together a budget. And um, really, everything that I do today is just I've learned out of curiosity and necessity. And um, I just want to take you guys on the journey of the last seven years or six years of Primp and um, tell you how we got there. So it all started in May of 2010. My business partner, Michelle, and I had met a year prior, and we had been designing handbags. Um, we were selling and distributing our handmade bags throughout the Twin Cities to different high-end boutiques. And we got to talking one day and said, gosh, isn't it ironic that we cannot afford to shop at any of the boutiques that are selling our bags? Um, and we were just broke. We were just recently out of college, and we loved, loved fashion. Michelle also, um, she went to St. Kate's for apparel design. And we couldn't afford to shop in a boutique. So we said, why can't you have a high-end boutique experience with a low-end price point that we can afford? And the idea of Primp was born. And so um, fast forward about four weeks, <laughs> we signed a lease um, <laughs> at Selby and Dale in St. Paul. Um, we, it was a very blank canvas, thankfully, on a really, really busy intersection in St. Paul. Um, we, going with the theme of being broke, started with nothing. Um, banks weren't exactly handing out loans to two young women with a dream to open a store. So we had borrowed $8,000 each from family members to start our store. And um, as you can see, we had my dad build the fitting rooms. We were not afraid to ask for favors from talented family members and friends. And we did the math that we had to sell six dresses a day just to keep the lights on and stay open and pay our rent and not pay ourselves. <laughs> so um, on September 16th, 2010, we had our grand opening party. And um, in preparation for the party, we had covered the windows with brown paper and so that we could have this big reveal. And about 20 minutes before the party, we ripped on the paper and there was a line down the block of people waiting to come in and shop. And Michelle and I just looked at each other and we're like, oh my gosh, what are we doing? <laughs> and <laughs> we um, thankfully figured it out. We did sell six dresses. Um, we actually sold out of everything in the store in four hours. Um, my husband and I had to run next door midway through to Muddy Pig, who had Wi-Fi. We didn't, because it didn't make the budget. And, <laughs> and we were overnighting orders, like, oh gosh, we have to be open now. Like We have to have inventory to sell. And so um, from there, we kind of knew quickly we have to replicate this. And um, we did. A year later, we opened our second store in West End. Um, it is a shopping mall, so a very, very different um, store location, a very dis different vibe than Selby and Dale. Um, it's actually a much bigger space than our first store. Um, being in a mall, it brought in mall shoppers. And so that was kind of a different customer that we had to get to know. Um, but ultimately, it worked. We figured it out. We, um, we were able to make it work and ultimately really realized that we wanted to replicate Selby. As much as we loved West End, we really wanted to keep opening stores that had kind of the hometown, local vibe. 
And so our third store, a year later, in June of 2012, we opened in White Bear Lake. Um, now by this time, we actually had the luxury of a contractor. <laughs> so that allowed us a lot more time to kind of do other things besides painting fixtures during the build out. And it was, um, at this time, we started really reflecting on our branding. Um, now when we opened Selby and Dale, we thought that we would be selling to college students, as I think anyone would, knowing how many colleges are in that area of St. Paul. And um, we actually, our core customer was between the ages of 28 and 32. And so we figured we needed to kind of dress up our logo, make it feel a little bit more polished, um, really cater to that specific customer. Um, we also launched a new website at the same time. Um, also during this time, we, two apparel design majors, launched our in-house line of knitwear called Henry Martin, our maiden names. And um, we just saw such an opportunity to create some dresses with longer hem lengths and just a little bit more flattering fit for more professional women and moms and just trying to broaden kind of what our customer can, what our customer can find in our store. So then in 2014, we doubled in size, and we opened three stores in Minneapolis, Excelsior, and Woodbury. And um, as I'm sure it comes as no surprise, there were a lot of challenges. Um, it was a very, very exciting year of growth, but also a lot of growing pains. Um, we got a new inventory software and had to retrain our entire staff. We kind of dabbled with online. I feel like that's the number one question that I always get asked, like, do you guys have an online store? And the answer is no, because it's really hard. <laughs> um, we tried, and we were still trying, um, but uh, it did not work. And, um, and we also started hiring headquarters employees. And so we had um, people that were helping us with our hiring and buying. So most recently, we opened our first store out of the Twin Cities in Rochester, Minnesota. And um, this has come with it a whole new kind of set of, of challenges, mostly being just relinquishing control. And Michelle and I are both firstborn entrepreneurs, and so that does not come easily to us. We want to have our hands in everything. Um, and so we just trust in our systems and in our staff and our manager that she's, you know, doing her job and reflecting Primp in the best way that Michelle and I would. So in conclusion, I, I don't know what the next five years will bring to Primp. Um, I know that we're going to keep growing. I know we're going to keep opening stores. I know we're going to figure out online. <laughs> Um, and I know that we're going to have amazing success, and I know we're going to fail, too, at things. And I know we're going to encounter things that we've never encountered before, and I'm so excited for that because that's what's made Primp what it is. Um, it's what makes my job so fun, and it's what's propelled our business to a place that I had never imagined, and it's what will continue to take us where we know Primp is capable of going. So thank you.